sound for the first time. And uh, this is more or less how I uh, did it. Or tried to do it. It didn't actually succeed until Wednesday, and that was too late. So uh, the idea is to have interactive sound streams. What we had is a bunch of different pots, and I'll show you later. Um, interactive sound streams throughout the piece um, that uh, people would interact with, and it would change depending on different parameters. Okay. Here's a picture of the piece being built. Um, you can see different pods. Each pod was meant to have uh, its own soundscape. Okay. The constraints, this is huge. Um, a 90, 97 by 60 foot uh, layout here. Um, getting independent sounds on each one of these pods um, was probably the biggest challenge. Um, cost, um, we're starving artists. We don't have a lot of money to throw around. And we had a lot of ideas thrown at us, and not one of them was feasible because, you know, everything's so expensive when we start talking about this stuff. Um, and uh, running cabling, we, went, we wound up having our Pod Central right about here. Um, and so we had to run cabling from here all the way around that way and all the way down that way. The longest run was right around 210 feet. Um, and then we had to have it su survive the, um, the damage that everything incurs on the plot. Um, it's, it's a caustic environment, and it has the tendency to erode electrical connections. So we had to have something that was a little bit more resilient than average. Okay, so uh, the idea that came up with was voice over IP. Um, you have your, you can buy off-the-shelf equipment, and you have your encoders and your decoders already already set up. You have a standard protocol. You have a standard interface for different encoding schemes. Um, everything is available off the shelf. The only thing is, um, uh, you need to come up with how you're going to control it. Um, the idea was to have a, a, a normal sound. Uh, the piece is just kind of making this ambient sound. And then as you approached, the sound would change. And each pod would have its own unique sound when you approached it. Um, so what we did to build this system, uh, we got a cheap server running asterisk, um, a PoE switch to send out um, power to everything. Um, and the Cisco phones, because they're cheap, well, relatively cheap, they're uh, really readily available and um, uh, used. <laughs> that was important. We don't buy them. Um, and um, um, we can take them apart. They're pretty durable. Um, and then the, the last step was something we kind of threw together at the last minute because uh, people dropped the ball but uh, motion detector sensors so that we could have them interact and have them respond to people. Okay, um, call control hardware. Basically, we mounted the, we ripped, ripped apart the uh, telephone units. That was kind of fun, tearing all the plastic off. Um, and uh, mounted them inside the boxes. Here you can kind of see, Right about there, there's a, a silver box, um, and we put all our, our communication stuff, or all our electronics in there, and there are some holes you can kind of see there. Um, so that's where we mounted the, the phone, and then we ran, we ran cables out. Um, we, soldered, we soldered the motion detector directly to the board. 
these, these ones aren't manufactured so that you can plug stuff into them. So we had to, we actually soldered um, onto the traces um, where that you make the connections when you punch the buttons on the phone. Um, so, oh, <laughs> okay, uh, we, <laughs> okay, and I'm almost done. <laughs> And so that's what it looked like, but without some. So it's really great.